1974's Criminally Insane is perfectly titled because it is both an insane movie and also criminally underrated. This is due for rediscovery as this midnight movie cult classic. It's directed by Nick Millard, which might be a familiar sounding name if you're in two shot on video movies. Because other than Criminally Insane and Satan's Black Wedding, I think he only did shot on video movies in the late 80s, including a sequel to this called Crazy Fat Ethel 2. Why is it called Crazy Fat Ethel 2? Well, you see, the main character is called Ethel, and she's crazy, and she's also big boned. <laughs> That's what my, uh, my parents used to say when I was a little chunker. They were like, oh, he's just big boned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure, mom and dad, sure. Thank you for not calling me fat, though. My heart's just fine as long as my stomach's not empty. And I don't think he really improved as a filmmaker because this honestly feels like a lost shot on video film. It is shot on film. A very bad quality film, but it is shot on film, but it just feels like a SOV movie. Even just the beginning where Ethel is at a mental hospital and she's getting shock therapy because this was the 70s, it just starts with music and then there's a scene that just has no audio at all. And when I first saw this movie, I was trying to adjust my volume and then when the audio came back on, I almost got a heart attack. The fact that the music is also the worst stock music you've ever heard probably didn't help. Anyways, the story is quite simple because this is literally 60 minutes of the same goddamn scenes playing over and over. You see, Ethel is going back to her grandmother's house after being hospitalized. Even though the doctor says it's probably not a good idea, which I mean he wasn't wrong because she murders people. At her grandmother's house, which I assume was just Nick Millard's home, she takes care of Ethel, but Ethel has a big appetite and she cannot stop eating. And I have to applaud Priscilla Alden who plays Ethel because not only does she do a great job at playing this childlike psychopath, but she also takes the jokes in this pretty good because half of this movie is fat jokes. Person's never too old to watch her figure. Anyways, as she's cooking a pound of fucking bacon, the grandmother is like, hey, maybe you should watch your figure because the doctor told her to say that. But Ethel doesn't want to hear a thing. Eventually, this gets way too much because it's really expensive to feed her, as the grandmother says, so she locks the food in a cabinet. What? Which is a bad idea because that triggers Ethel and she stabs Grandmama to death. But there's just one problem. Grandmama provides the food, so how is she gonna provide the food? Well, she calls a market and they tell her that she owes them money. $80 in fact, which I made the conversion and that's about $550 in today's money. Which would still just be like a week of groceries. Look, we gotta eat! Anyway, she tells the guy, I'll pay it, and then when the delivery boy comes, she doesn't have the money. Just like a kid, she tries to find the money and she only has four dollars, so the kid is like, yeah, I'm just gonna leave, but in her fit of rage, she kills the boy. I don't have eighty dollars, I've only got four fifty. Then, Ethel's sister walks into the portrait, and I also have to say that this film feels really like a sitcom. It has the one location, the nosy neighbors, and characters just coming in. I was watching this movie just waiting for somebody to applaud and laugh, but never came. I don't believe it, but I think you've gotten even fatter. <laughs> Anyways, her sister is a hooker and she's also with a guy. Well, not at the beginning because she left the guy because he beat her. And no, none of the characters in this are likable. Even Ethel is kind of racist because the first line she says in the entire movie is anti-Semitic. That goddamn Jew doctor gave them orders not to give me enough to eat. And then later when the police asks her about the boy, she blames a black dude who was... Probably not even there. I guess she's better off sleeping with that little brown man than being drunk all the time. So yeah, the sister shows up, she's like, oh, if this guy comes in, I don't want to talk to him. And then later we discover that she's a hooker. And uh, yeah, she gets back with her ex-boyfriend who had just left her for an older woman who promised him to go to Hollywood. He's not a great guy. He beats his girlfriend and... Uh, he does bring one of my favorite scenes, and I just love the subtle comedy in this. Ethel just walks in the door, and the guy says, Jesus. 
And I don't know why. That just made me laugh. I'm a terrible person. Jesus. John. Eventually, they start smelling the rotting corpses that are in Grandmother's room, and they start to ask questions, but Ethel is like, nah, I'll take care of that, it's probably just a dead cat. Anyway, she keeps eating. Every scene she's in, she's got some goddamn food. Like, come on, Nick, we get it. You don't have to show us in every scene. Well, I'm not planting flowers. And then the police start snooping around, but uh, this is not a giallo. Let's get back to Ethel just murdering people, like the doctor, the client of her sisters, and eventually her sister and her boyfriend, in a very, very silly scene with a hatchet, which is probably the most iconic image of this film since it was used in the posters. Eventually, even Ethel is like, damn, I gotta do something about this smell. We are in San Francisco, it's hot, my neighbors are like this close to my house, so she figures that she could go dump the bodies. But she can't really because she does it in broad goddamn daylight. Yeah, Ethel is in the smartest cookie around. Aren't you glad I didn't put you in there with all that stink and everything? <laughs> Then her goddamn nosy neighbor go looks at her trunk and sees the body parts, because we do get to see Ethel chop the body parts, and we also get a weird dream sequence that I have to say wasn't shot in the home. It was shot outside, in a park, with Priscilla Alden wearing this almost drag queen-esque makeup, it's beautiful, but the scene is half out of focus. It's fucking so amateur. <laughs> Anyways, she gets caught, and then when the detective walks up, she's eating the bodies, because she doesn't have food anymore, and that was criminally insane, aka Crazy Fat Ethel, aka Don't go after me, Twitter. It's in the goddamn time. The goddamn line is 250 pounds of maniacal fur furry. Furry? Fury. I'm not a furry. Shouldn't cover up that cute little rump of yours with that coat. So, yeah. My final conclusions on Criminally Insane is I love this movie. This is up there with Erancia Diabolica as the goofiest, stupidest, funnest movie I've seen this year. It's a blast. I'd honestly recommend it if you're ever in a group of friends and you want to throw something on after you've been drinking and or smoking the ganja, man, that you just put that on and you just watch it and just have a blast with it. There's so many funny scenes. Like I said, the subtle comedy, I probably wasn't intended to be, I'm pretty sure this was meant to be a real thriller, but uh, it fails because it's goddamn incompetent and it feels like a shot on video movie from the early 80s that the Polonia brothers would have made if they had, you know, a cast instead of just them and their grandmother. But yeah, I love this movie. Go check it out. Veneer Syndrome released a Blu-ray with also Nick Millard's other shot on film film. Satan's Black Wedding, which I haven't seen yet, but it's also just an hour, just an hour, so probably a quick watch. Anyways, I'm hungry. See you guys next time.